Am I the asshole for treating T this way after dad's death? Too long did not read. Dad had a serious girlfriend he never told me about. Now she wants our farmhouse and items. I am ignoring her because I didn't know she existed. So I therefore don't think dad only wanted me to have anything. Dad started online dating. One woman, T, fell hard for dad. I knew this because I had access to dad's Facebook messenger since we use it to sell items. Dad never told me, being like, who's this T you're talking about? Two, I don't know why you're jealous it's hilarious, but never. Hey, I'm dating T, we have a farmhouse, they would go there together. She helped him fix it up and even had her own family there. I never met T, was never invited to meet her, didn't know, outside Facebook, they were supposedly building a life together. Fast forward to his funeral, and T with her family come. She was very emotional. She saw me at the front alone and proceeded to walk up to sit next to me, but the daughter-in-law wisely stopped them from going all the way up there. T was not happy with this and they ended up sitting in a pew to themselves. After the service ended T comes to me with family in tow. The first thing she says to me is, darling, we have to discuss things. I don't know why you didn't tell me your daddy and my darling died. That was incredibly rude and he would have expected me to participate. I squeaked out a, I'm very sorry but who are you? She realizes I am serious. She turns to her family and is like, oh my god, I can't dot she doesn't. She asked people to open the casket and I was like, no we've had it opened already, the funeral people obeyed my wishes, and T flips out, hyperventilating with her family having to sit her down. To me if she were as serious as she thought this wouldn't be our first meeting. I don't have her email, phone, or anything. My guess is she read about him in the paper or someone told her. All the estate fall on me. Or so I thought. I went into the funeral home's probate place, and T was speaking with the lady. Someone told her about dad's meeting. She was upset because the lady wouldn't tell her anything before speaking with me. I come in, and she makes T go outside. I then explain everything to her with T. She makes a note to not talk to T, and we continue. T is still there when I'm leaving. She demands to know why I'm not talking to her. Now I lose it. I told her I don't know who the HLL she is. She states she wants what's hers. Our farmhouse built by my ancestors and her stuff in it. I told her again I don't know her and clearly she's not meant to anything since I never knew her and dad had a will drawn up years ago saying I get everything. I had already been to the farmhouse, changed the codes, and thrown anything not belonging to my family. Nothing legals happen but if it does I'm not worried. She has no case in my opinion. Dad's will proves that. I think she needs to take her memories and move on. So with that in mind am I the asshole to treat T this way? Update. Thank you all for the comments, especially letting me see T's side. That's what I needed. Re. Account. I was trying to go incognito, but Reddit switched me back over to my real one at times. I've decided to put me first and not reach out to T in any way. Hate this happened to her, but I also think she should have thought these things out, and seen some warning signs, who has their entire family for Christmas and your partner doesn't even mention their own. She clearly expected something, but I have any and all legal documents so feel strong in my points. As I said below I'm not worried about the throwing out aspect. I wrote here that I went to the farmhouse to start ownership transfer, and threw out decor. She didn't have say toothpaste or clothes there. Also changed the house theme so I can easily say, hey I never knew about the woman. How would I have known this was hers? Not the asshole. You lost your father and all she cares about is herself. Don't let her have anything. Not the asshole, she thought she could weasel her way into a free house and estate after his death, but forgot the very important details of one. Getting the will rewritten and two. Making herself known to his family pre-death. She's an idiot and made a fool of herself at a funeral for nothing. Not the asshole. I'm sorry for your loss. T only seems to care about the stuff and attention that your father's death could bring her, not the actual loss. And if your father felt anything for her, he would have amended his will. He didn't, so everything is yours. Feel free to block her, and get a lawyer involved if she starts harassing you. Not the asshole his estate will go where he said it should go and that's just all there is to worry about. For all you know she's trying to scam you. Not the asshole T sounds unhinged. If you knowingly tossed her property rather than return it, that was unkind. But I can see how coordinating property return would have been a risk on your part. People like her will never think what you give them is enough and she truly does sound disconnected enough from reality to be a danger to you and your property. Info. 
When you say you, threw anything away that didn't belong to your family, are you talking about her things? Like she definitely sucks. Although if your dad was stringing her along all these years I definitely have sympathy for her. But if you threw away her things without even giving her a chance to go through them then you're also kind of an awe. Not the asshole sounds like a gold digger to me. If your dad had been that serious and wanted her to have anything had have changed the will. Not the asshole I'm very sorry to hear about your dad and you definitely do not need all this added drama with this random chick. If she was anything to your dad then I'm sure you'd be the first person to know about it. She seems like a gold digger trying to take everything away that is rightfully yours. Don't give in. Don't let her contact you. There's nothing legally she'd be able to do anyways. Good luck with everything and keep that witch away. Am I the asshole for wanting to sell a house my sister no longer needs? Edited to add. Thanks all for your comments, and for confirming to me that I'm not all wrong in feeling uneasy about the pressure I'm feeling. Both from sister and in some measure from other family members, to just give in and make the house a rental. For context, when I first realized she'd moved out in early 2020, I both spoke with her about my concerns and sent her an email clearly outlining that I had no interest in being a landlord, etc. Then lockdown hit, which was when she had friends staying there, plus on a few other occasions I was happy with this as I'm aware of insurance issues with an empty house, etc. I was concerned about the stability of her relationship, so haven't rushed to sell earlier. The relationship seems much more settled now, and she has expressed on a number of occasions that she wouldn't want to live in, our, house again anyway. At the beginning of this year, I spoke to her again and said that I would give her 2021 to decide what to do with the house, and I intend to honor that so now being September, I was just wondering what others thought. My intention is to invoke the opt-out clause in January next year, if she still hasn't made any decisions by then. That will give her a month to decide before the house is put on the market. On one hand it feels quite harsh. Dot but on the other hand I feel stuck in a situation I don't want to be in. Thanks though for the reassurance that I'm not a complete cow for considering this. And hash x200b. And hash x200b. Original post. A few years back, my sister and I went halves in a small house for her to live in. As she was having housing troubles, facing potential homelessness, and needed help. We used money from an inheritance. I didn't really want to buy a house with her, but she couldn't get a mortgage on her own and I knew her share of the inheritance would be wasted if she just had it sitting in her bank account, so it seemed like the best thing to do, and was also honoring the relative whose money we inherited, since he wanted to help my sister out too. We found a house we could afford, saw a lawyer and got a contract drawn up. She seemed happy with the contract, signed it no problem, etc. All went fine. She moved in and lived there relatively happily for nearly two years. Then she met a man in another town, many hours drive away, and decided to move in with him. She didn't tell me she was moving. Just upped and left. This was nearly two years ago, and the house has been largely empty since then, other than a few random friends of hers who she's had to house sit occasionally. I feel like I've been quite patient and reasonable in giving her time to see if this new relationship will work which it seems to be they've bought a house to live in together, etc. I would like to sell the house she no longer seems to want to live in, and an opt-out clause in our property sharing contract allows me to give her notice of my intention to sell, to give her the chance to buy me out of my share. House prices in this area have nearly doubled since we purchased the house. She wants to keep the house as a rental, but I don't. Neither of us live within five hours drive of where the house is, and I have no interest in being a landlord. Plus I have a large mortgage of my own that I would like to be able to pay off partially. I've expressed to her, on a number of occasions, that it's my wish to exit the agreement, but she thinks I'm being selfish, forcing, her to sell, her, house. If she needed it to live in, I wouldn't be considering selling my share, but since she doesn't, I would rather have my money back. She's now even saying that the contract, that she read, agreed to, signed etc. wasn't fair. I've had enough. Am I the asshole? NTA. You've tried to do this nicely but she won't accept it time to get a lawyer and get it done it. She has no need for the house and I'm sure leaving it sitting vacant isn't doing it any favors. Not the asshole. She's being manipulative and you should sell the house or they can buy you out. Not the asshole. Get a lawyer involved quickly. Not the asshole go and see your lawyer and if need be force the sale she can either buy you out or she can sell buy you need your money back. Not the asshole. I'm wondering if her reticence to sell is due to wanting a backup if her relationship goes south and she sees it as you forcing her hand. 
whereas a rental gets some income in for you both and gives her some breathing room in her view. Not the asshole you have one entitled sister. Lawyer up. Not the asshole. And hash x 200b. She has your money, and does not want to give it back. You are right to demand and enforce it. And hash x 200b. She is not even in dire need, as she was when you helped her, she just wants to use your money to make more money for her, while you pay for it. Use it for your mortgage instead she is just exploiting you. Not the asshole it's time for another family to enjoy the house she has moved on from. You've given her fair warning, time to call the lawyer. Am I the asshole for not telling my nanny that my kids were sick before she came over? Before you judge me based on the title please just hear me out. I am a single mother to two children. My husband died a year ago when our youngest was around six months old and our oldest was two years old. He was coming home from helping a friend move when a drunk driver hit him. He was dead on impact and I've been trying to keep things together ever since. We lost a lot when he died. I was a stay-at-home mom battling disability so he was the only breadwinner and he was the one who he got health insurance through. My health concerns have continued since he died and my medical debt is significant. I managed to find a job that pays somewhat decently, offers decent hours, but most importantly it offers health insurance. I don't have any family close by to help me because we moved for my husband's job and even if they lived close by they couldn't. I supplement my paycheck by working from home, that's how I pay for a nanny. I love my nanny, Ruth, and she was a great fit for the family. She's a woman in her late 50s who was previously a pediatric nurse who retired last year. A few days ago I noticed my younger child had strange bumps around her mouth, she was feverish and listless and she had tummy troubles. My oldest child started showing similar symptoms and then their fingernails and toenails started to break and fall off. We had been to a soft play center last week and I have a theory they picked it up there so I gave the soft play a call and suggested they do a deep clean. I also called the one other family that we'd come into contact with and let them know. Edit. Didn't realize I didn't write the diagnosis. Hand, foot, and mouth disease. The kids were not horrifically sick but they were pitiful. I wish I could stay home with them but if I don't work I'm going to get fired and lose my benefits. If I lose my benefits and the kids get worse, or my health takes a turn, we'll be in big trouble. I was worried if I told Ruth she wouldn't come and I'd be forced to call out from work. I figured being a former PEDS nurse she would be a little more understanding. By yesterday I'd taken off four days and my boss was threatening me with termination if I didn't come. I did tell Ruth that I would be home with the kids for a few days but not why. When she arrived at my apartment yesterday she immediately knew by looking at them what they have and she called me irresponsible, dangerous, and selfish. She quit on the spot. I was and am shocked. By this point I'd confined the kids to their room and deep cleaned the apartment. I also had PPE ready for Ruth. I was only going to be at work for four and a half hours and the kids don't feel like getting out of bed. All she'd have had to do was check on them a few times, feed them one meal, and she could have been around them minimally. Am I the asshole? Edit. Guys, I don't mind getting judgments, that what I came here for, but for God's sake don't abuse the Reddit crisis helpline. You never know if by sending that you might actually send someone over the edge. It's childish. If you have an issue with me then just say it here in the comments. And if anyone DMs me I'll be reporting them to Reddit and to the am I the asshole mods. Have the balls to say nasty stuff in the comments. If you can message nasty stuff then you can risk getting a ban from IATA. Jesus, I had the balls to make a post seeking judgment, at least have the same balls to say your piece publicly. I'll also be tagging in this post those who DM me nasty messages. I also called the one other family that we'd come into contact with and let them know. But your nanny Ruth whom you love oh so much was left in the dark. Why? Because your husband died a year ago? No? Then don't share a totally irrelevant sob story for pity points. Couldn't have said it better than ex-peds nurse Ruth. You're irresponsible, dangerous, and selfish. You are the asshole. You are the asshole. It sounds like you are in a really difficult situation but that doesn't give you the right to expose people to illnesses like this. You had a feeling she wouldn't come in if she knew. So it seems you were basically hoping to pressure her into staying when she didn't want to? That's manipulative in general and as an employer, a pretty shitty thing to do to an employee. You are the asshole, you didn't tell her because you knew she might say no and decided to expose her to a whatever it is. If she is a nurse and it is a small virus she would have been able to prepare and take precautions or deny the service but that's her choice. 
You really showed you don't care for her as much as you try to pretend you do on your text. I get that you didn't have another choice, but that doesn't mean you're not being deceitful intentionally. You are the asshole. You considered it serious enough to call the other parent and the soft play center to let them know that your kids were sick, but you thought it was okay to expose Ruth without telling her first. Why was her health, safety of less value? You thought it was acceptable to risk her health and safety because it benefited you. Ruth was right what you did was selfish, irresponsible and dangerous. Question op. Would you have been fine with it if your children were healthy and Ruth came to babysit presenting all of the symptoms your children have? Just shows up at your door with bumps and a fever and nails falling off. She could have told you beforehand. But she didn't because she thought you might not want her to watch your kids. Would you feel comfortable with her caring for your children in that state? You are the asshole your kids likely have hand foot and mouth disease which is incredibly virulent and you didn't warn her. You just expected to put herself at risk, not cool, not cool at all. You are the asshole I understand you are going through a very tough time with your health, passing of your husband, and being a single mom. However you withheld very important information. Your kids had mouth sores and were losing fingernails which to be honest does sound horrifically sick. She's an older woman, in a deadly pandemic, and she didn't know what your children were sick with. Just think would you have been upset if she had come to your home sick and been around your children? You are the asshole the post was bad, but god those edits made you sue much worse. Am I the asshole for getting mad at a joke? So my boyfriend and I have been dating for around 1.5 years, we're a happy couple, although sometimes we have terrible fights. Lately, the fights have been a bit worse. I cry and apologize and sometimes he taunts and says that it has become a habit and my apologies mean nothing to him because I say it so often, which can be true. I do apologize a lot. So here's an example of our latest argument. We did sort it out but I feel hurt. So he was crashing over and then in the morning I made brunch for the both of us. I picked up a controller but then he asked me if I can help him with work. I was thinking about it and then he said, it'll mean a lot and you'll be there for me, right? And so I agreed. I quickly went to the store to get hash for us and then I biked to his workplace. Anyway, we were supposed to watch UFC with a friend at my house afterwards so I left his work early to clean up my place. I was supposed to buy some tobacco for us, he's waiting for his monthly salary and so I offered to cover the costs. I reached home, cleaned up and spent 10 minutes talking to my family on the phone. Unfortunately, they, boyfriend and friend, arrived in the meantime. So I thought I'll quickly run and get some from the store, although I didn't explicitly say it. My boyfriend enters the house and asks about the tobacco, so I said, I haven't gotten it yet, I'll just go. But he sarcastically responded, you had an hour, did you visit your friends or what? It rubbed me the wrong way because I felt that I was running around all day and when I messed up once, I get a humiliating reaction. I felt angry and slammed the door while entering and exiting the house but I didn't say anything. Later at night. I tell my boyfriend that I was a bit annoyed because of his reaction and I didn't like what he said earlier. He got angry and said that I behaved like a two-year-old in front of his friend and I'm always overdramatic and a drama queen. He also said that I live in my own fantasy and care too much about what I feel. Whereas, in reality, emotions and feelings aren't more important than the truth or reality itself. And that I need to stop giving so much importance to what I'm feeling. I feel crazy and dumb. I'm starting to doubt my perception of the world because I'm repeatedly being told that it's not correct or practical. Am I the asshole for reacting the way I did? I did get mad and slammed the door, which is passive aggressive and childish. Edit, update. I talked to my boyfriend about this and I think he realized his mistake because he apologized and explained that from his perspective he was trying to help the situation and he didn't realize he crossed a few boundaries and he will also have a talk with his friend about boundaries and things about his behavior which I do not find okay. He said, paraphrased, I'm sorry if you felt that way, I didn't have a problem with you feeling certain emotions. I just want to help you, we've decided to be more a bit open to what the other person is saying without getting defensive. I hope it gets better. Thank you. Not the asshole. Not even close. However your boyfriend is a flaming awe. It seems your relationship has a rhythm where he says something rude, you react, he gets mad and you apologize not him. He appears to be manipulative and frankly he's the immature one not you. Tons of red flags here. Location flag location flag location flag location flag location flag location flag. Not the asshole, and you're not a happy couple. You just don't know any better. From this one post alone I count multiple flags.
He taunts you for apologizing. He doesn't acknowledge the work you put into chores. He berated you in front of his friends, has no problem humiliating you in front of them. Your actions apparently are always more hurtful than his actions, even when the responses are disproportionate. He gets angry and relegates your feelings to you being a drama queen. He constantly gaslights you and now you're the one questioning if it was you or not. I hope you find someone that respects you the way you deserve. Not the asshole. But if I were you, I'd reevaluate the relationship. He sounds so condescending. He's all sweet when he needs a favor then acts as if it was a demand not a favor. Are you seriously happy with that asshole of a BF? Not the asshole he sounds pretty entitled for being too fucking broke to get his own drugs. What a loser. Okay. Some people here are going to say you're a drama queen and others are going to say that he is gaslighting you. It's hard to discern exactly what is going on here but in my honest opinion, you two are all wrong for each other. You have a right to your feelings but I understand his pob that slamming the doors was childish. He does not have a right to invalidate your feelings or emotionality, which is exactly what he did. You're not the asshole but this relationship is unhealthy for both of you. Please, end it. Not the asshole this guy is gaslighting you. He mocked you and then says you are childish, dramatic for slamming a door. Run away fast. You s-h-o-u-l-d-n-t be doing his work for him, that's his work. Then he gets snotty that you've not stopped and bought him his cancer starter? Not the asshole. A normal person would have responded with, all right, stay safe, when their significant other forgets something and needs to go to the store. An asshole responds by belittling you and your time spent. From your post, I'm not sure why you're still with him. It's clear he doesn't really respect your feelings nor your time. Not the asshole. You helped him with his work, went to your home to clean and prepare and then ran out of time for tobacco that he could not afford. He then gave you a snide remark. He taunts and says that it has become a habit and my apologies mean nothing to him because I say it so often, I'm starting to doubt my perception of the world because I'm repeatedly being told that it's not correct or practical. This is sounding like gaslighting, and you should be taking a careful look at your relationship because it sounds like you're being taken advantage of.